For this exercise, click on Open and browse to Chapter 16 and open Chapter 16 Schedules. From the Project Browser, scroll down and check that Level 1 HVAC plan is the active plan. It doesn't really matter about this plan right now, but we are going to come back in here and take a look at some of its properties. But in the meantime, I'd also like to tag the spaces as we will be referring to the spaces very shortly. So from your Annotate tab, click on Tag All. Scroll down in Tag All until you find Space Tags and click on Apply. Then click on OK. This has created a tag for each space in our plan. I'm now going to create a space schedule. And space schedule is going to give me the ability to see not only the spaces, but do some calculations based on airflow. From the View tab, click on Schedules, click on Schedule Quantities, and scroll down in the category list until you find spaces. As you can see here, I can't find them. There's a filter on this list. We need to make sure that Mechanical is selected. And then we have Spaces. Click on OK. I now want to select some fields. So scroll down in the available fields until we find Level and click on Add. Click on Number. And I can double click to place the field in the right hand box. Click on Name. Calculated Supply Airflow. Actual Supply Airflow. And at this point, I'm also going to create a calculated value. We'll give this a name. Let's call this Airflow Delta. This is going to be a formula, the discipline of which is HVAC, and it relates to airflow. And the formula is going to be my actual supply airflow minus my calculated supply airflow and click on OK. Now if I click on OK, I create the schedule. And you can see that I now have a space schedule. And if I scroll down, you can see that we have all the spaces defined in our project. We have them by level, number, name, is the calculated and actual supply airflows, and the airflow delta. The whole purpose of having the airflow delta is a bit of a warning message to show us that the actual airflow supply is less than the calculated. But wouldn't it be great if this actually popped out at us? Well, we can do this. From the Properties palette, click on Formatting. Click on Airflow Delta, and we're now going to add a conditional statement where we're going to say Airflow Delta is less than or equal to zero liters a second. We can change the background color to red. Click on OK, OK, and finally OK. And that now gives us a list of spaces where we need to go and have a look at why our airflow is less than the calculated supply airflow. Scrolling down the list of spaces, I can see that some spaces may not actually need to be heated or cooled. And we can also see spaces that have way over their airflow requirements. If I right click on one of these rows, I can click on show. And if the view is open, Revit will take me to that view. This makes it much easier to work with my design. For this exercise, click on open. Browse to your Chapter 16 folder and open the file Chapter 16 Schedules for Documentation. In the Project Browser, scroll down until you find the Schedules section and double click to open the Lighting Fixture Schedule. Here, all the lighting fixtures from the entire project are contained in the schedule, which I'd like to place on a sheet. So let's have a go. From my Sheets, right click and click on New Sheet. I'm going to use an AO metric title block and click on OK. I'm going to renumber my sheet and we'll call this one 602. 
and edit the parameter for the name and call this Luminaire Schedules. I can now drag my lighting fixture schedule onto the sheet. And as you can see from here, it doesn't fit very well. So what can I do about this? One of the things I can do is using the grips, stretch the fields out until we have a single line for each type of fitting. But that's still not going to get me onto the sheet. If I wanted to display every single light fitting, we can place this lower down on the sheet and use the break line and the grips to break my schedule into smaller pieces that are manageable and which also allow me to see the schedule on the entire sheet. As you can see, if I drag too close, I can't resize the columns. And I can drag these until the whole thing fits almost neatly onto my sheet. But generally, all I'd want from my fitting schedule is one row per fitting. I could enter this as text, but then what's the point? So what I can do here is go to the Properties palette and click on Sorting and Grouping. Let's sort by Type Mark. So this is now going to sort my fittings into A, B, C, etc. The other thing I want to do is uncheck this Itemize Every Instance. This means it will only get one line per fitting. Click on OK. I now have a lighting fixture schedule, which if I go back to my sheet, almost displays the way I want it. Let's just drag the unwanted empty columns back over the top of the first one and scroll in. All that's left is make this look exactly how I'd want it to present. So let's take a look at that in more detail. Click on your lighting fixture schedule again. So this time from the properties palette, I'm going to click on formatting. Let's look at the different fields. Here I've got type mark and I can align this to the center. I might want to do the same for the lamp and for the count, let's align those to the right. Then with appearance, I can choose my header text, its size, and the body text and its size. If I click OK and now go back to my sheet, we've updated the schedule. From your startup screen, click on Open, browse to the Chapter 16 folder, and open the file Chapter 16 Schedules for Data Filtering. In the project browser, scroll down until you find the mechanical equipment schedule. Mechanical equipment is probably one of the hardest things to separate in a schedule. In this exercise, we're going to go through a few very easy steps to create a robust filter that will handle the majority of cases in your project. As you can see in here, we've got all different types of mechanical equipment. We have water source heat pumps, air handling units, cooling towers, water heaters, and fans. And there are a variety of methods to be able to filter the mechanical equipment, but it doesn't always work the way you expect. Take, for example, the air handling unit. We could want to filter by the family and type, but we're unable to. There are limits to what you can and cannot use in the filter. So here we're going to create our own filter and apply some data to the existing families. This may seem like a large task, especially on a big project. Even on this small project with only a few pieces of mechanical equipment, it could take us some time. So what I want to also explore is filtering so that we can manage this data. So before I even start in the schedule, let's go to the Manage tab and click on Shared Parameters. Now, shared parameters do require some careful administration. You should have at least one shared parameter file that is a standard for your company. And as long as somebody's managing it, you could also have a shared parameter file for the project you're working on. So what I want to do here is create a shared parameter file. 
I'm going to browse to my project folder and create Chapter 16 Shared Parameters and click on Save. I now need to create a group. Let's call it HVAC. And under this group, I'm going to create a new parameter and call it Equipment Type. I want to be very careful here that I create it as text rather than letting the default length go, as I cannot come back and change this afterwards. Click on OK and click on OK. Now I need to introduce that shared parameter into my project file. I can now go back to the Manage tab, click on Project Parameters, and add my shared parameter. Let's select it from the list, Equipment Type. Notice how the Equipment Type parameter data is not available to change. The one thing I do want to change is that it's going to be a type parameter. And we're going to assign that to Mechanical Equipment and click on OK. Click on OK again, and I'm now going to add that field to my schedule. Click on Equipment Type, add it to the list, and in this instance, I'll move it up to the top of the list. Click on OK. This has now added Equipment Type to my schedule, and I can start populating this with some data. For the heat pumps, Let's type in WSHP and press enter. This now gives me a message saying that the change will be applied to all elements of type WHSP horizontal high efficiency 7 to 18 kilowatt. Click on OK. As you can see, there are now several instances where the heat pumps have that data assigned to them. I'm going to go through that again. This time I don't even have to type in because the data is already there, we'll get that same message. And I can just repeat this through the rest of the project. Until I get to the next piece of equipment, the air handling unit, and we want to change that. We've now got two items in our list. scroll down in the list, and carry on. For the fan, let's type in fan, cooling tower, and water heater. I can now use this as a filter to display only the equipment that I want to see in the schedule. So let's select the schedule in the project browser, right click, and duplicate. I'm going to rename this as my heat pump schedule. And from the properties palette, click on filter, filter by equipment type, and we'll say that equals WSHP. Click on OK. And this now filters out everything except the heat pumps. We now no longer need to see the equipment type field so we can hide it. 